All right. It says black guy voice. It says, Bill, my girlfriend and I have found a hot button issue between uh, the two of us. She hates a black guy voice that I do when I make jokes. He goes, I'm not black and neither is she. Uh, When we started dating, I didn't really do it. But when we were playing Monopoly with one of my oldest friends and I started winning, once once I was winning and my oldest friend was there, the old black guy voice made an appearance. I don't really say racist things. What does that mean, I don't really say racist things? Or he's saying, like, I don't really say racist thing. I can't tell because you're writing this stuff. So he goes, it, I would just say stuff like, oh, yeah, give me that dollar. Or this is some serious cheddar right here. I'm not going to try to even do a fucking black guy voice here. A hacky one. Uh, he goes, I also show, showered my dog in $500 bills and rubbed it all over his body like I was uh, at a, like it was a party. My friend found it hilarious. My girlfriend said I was mocking her. I love that she's making it about her. I thought that she was going like, listen, what you're doing is funny if you're doing it like if your heart's in the right place. But she's she, this is all about her. She goes, he goes, personally, I think she's I think being an asshole is an expected part of the game. I guess the game of Monopoly, but that's just me. He goes, now that we've moved in together, I continue to do the voice in a playful way. Uh, if she asks for a favor, I might reply, sure, dog, I got you. See, I think that's fucking funny. Um, he goes, and then she glares at me and tells me she hates that voice. She doesn't understand. This is when it gets weird, though. He goes, that I'm making fun of people who talk like that, and I'm not trying to make fun of her. This is where it goes off the rails for me. Uh, and I don't know, but I don't know how you're making fun of him. Are you just being ridiculous, like the way I'll do, like a southern voice? Like, Nia, God damn it, get your fucking ass in here, ass for a sandwich. Right? And is what is the rule? Because I'm making fun of redneck white people and I'm white, I'm allowed to do that. Um, it all depends on it. Real, all of this shit, it all depends on how you're doing it, like what your point is. Um, Anyway, so he goes, I don't, I don't really know what, blah, blah, blah. He goes, I don't really know what she thinks I'm, I'm doing, honestly. I don't see what is so offensive about the voice. And then he writes, nah, I mean, I like saying, ah, shit, and motherfucker. I like referring to our middle-aged white neighbor as that ghetto-ass N-word. I think it's funny. Now, I got to be honest with you. Even that is funny if you're just fucking around. A white guy calling some middle-aged white dude, especially if he looks like Flanders. I don't know. And I know you're not supposed to say that, but you're in your house. You're fucking around. It's your world. It's your TV station. And I really think if, you, if, you're, if you're not doing any of this maliciously, like that, that's funny. I think it's funny anyways, but I don't know where you're coming from with this, sir. Anyways, he goes, my question is, do you think I should stop doing the voice or do I have the right to continue doing it? You obviously have a right to continue doing it. Um, He goes, I don't consider it racist and it's really just for laughs. As a comedian, I think you can appreciate that. Is my girlfriend being too touchy about it? And even if she is being too touchy, do I really have a say in it? Is this the end of the black guy voice as we know it? (laughs) I don't even know what that means. Sometimes I insist on her adding the word DJ before my name when she speaks to me. See, dude, I think you're just being silly. But I just do that because I know it pisses her off and it's funny. I'm not really an asshole, Bill. uh, If you think I should stop, I actually will. It's time for a third party weigh on this. Well, the fact that you say if I actually said stop, you will. I think uh, it all depends on how you mean this. But this actually relates to stand-up comedy right now where, uh, you know, there's a lot of this people go out and they see your act. They see a bunch of comedians or they listen to you tell a bunch of jokes and then they pick out one joke and they define you. They define you by that joke, by how they heard the joke, and they define your entire career by that performance. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I had some blogger go off on me. Um, about a show I did recently. And it's like, I just taped, I just taped an hour and a half special. I just burned an hour and a half of material. I wasn't ready to go back out on the road. I had that fucking goddamn 
Mississippi River go through the lower part of my fucking house. And I have to make money or else I'm going to go under, right? Basically, you know, I'm going to get myself in a ridiculous amount of fucking debt. So I went out before I was ready to go out and I am, I need material. And I, you know, one of these shows that somebody complained about was, it was a city that I went to a year ago and I'm not going out there repeating material. I'm not fucking people over. So I went out there and I did my thing. And, you know, my act, where my act is right now, I don't like where my act is right now at all. No comic does two months after they take a special. Nobody is happy where their fucking act is. If you're really, you know, being honest with yourself. So this person saw me and, you know, didn't like what I was talking about. And absolutely, you know, I mean, I just skimmed. Somebody sent me a link. I just skimmed it. I didn't really fucking read it. But it was just like... You know, I wouldn't argue with a lot of your perception of it, but to define me as a stand-up comic on one fucking show, you know, when I'm trying to try, it's like doing stand-up comedy. It's not like playing guitar. I can't sit in my bedroom and get better at it. And when it's ready to be heard, go out and go play. I have to fucking go out there and just. It's like fucking cooking pasta. Remember the old days? You took a noodle out, you threw it at the wall, and if it stuck, it was done. If it wasn't, you kept going. That's what you're doing. So this person fucking didn't like what I was talking about, absolutely trashed me, and then, like, lied. Like, completely, either lied or was so wrapped up in how much they didn't like what I was talking about that they didn't see what happened. I mean, the show I did, I got a partial standing ovation, and they called me back out. And this person left all of that out, left all of that shit out. and was just like, he was a monster. He was saying, you know, it's just one of those things where if you're joking, if you're fucking joking, then like, I don't think the other person, you know, they can take it however they want to take it. But just because they decide to take it seriously doesn't mean that you now meant it. And, um, that's sort of like a uh, – that's kind of something that's going on. So what I would say is, as far as what you're doing is, you know, if you're not a racist guy, if you don't have issues and you're just doing it because it's a funny character. And I get doing a character that drives your wife up the wall. I actually – the character you do, I will say – I mean I don't drop the N-word. But I will say that I will do that type of slang – but what I do it is I, I do it in my voice and I say it really seriously because it, it sounds absolutely grating to my wife. And it either really makes her laugh or it annoys the shit out of her. So um, I don't know. I think that's part of being with somebody is you have to have something that you do that they find annoying and you find hilarious. So, um, you know, I don't know. It all it all depends. I, I think it's funny that I, actually I can't even get, give her shit that she she's making it about herself. That actually is kind of one for your side that the way you're doing it isn't in a racist way, but she just doesn't like it. I don't know, dude. The last thing you want to do is take any sort of advice from me when it comes to fucking women because the way that I grew up was basically if somebody didn't like something, you did it even more. Um, it was that sort of sadistic, mean level of teasing. And uh, for the longest time in my adult life, I didn't know where the line was. Um, I used to have this this running joke where when I was living with Robert Kelly way back in the day, he had a similar sadistic upbringing that was even worse than mine. And he was the only guy that I met that I can really think of that was further down that road that I was. And basically when people would sit around, like when we were even at the cellar, when the trashing would start, a lot of times we would pick up where the game ended would be our startup. Nah, maybe not at the cellar because it got pretty fucking mean. But generally speaking, we would like where we started was the area that most people didn't even delve in in that game. 
And that became like the running joke for a while where people would tease the two of us at how we played that game where someone would make fun of our shirt and then we'd be like, yeah, at least my mom isn't dead. Like we would take it. To, I mean, we wouldn't go that far, but it was they would make fun. So I actually had to learn to dial it back um, when it comes to stuff like that. So uh, like I said, I wouldn't listen to me because I am fucking damaged goods.